Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. This channel just surpassed 10,000 subscribers. To celebrate, we're going to make a 3D printed plastic play button. Let's get started. What is a YouTube play button? YouTube issues creator rewards to channels that hit certain subscriber milestones. Silver, gold, and diamond play buttons are issued once channels have more than 100,000, 1 million, and 10 million subscribers respectively. While Super Make Something hasn't reached those numbers quite yet, the channel recently hit its own smaller milestone, 10,000 subscribers. This is in large part due to all of you who continue to watch, like, and share my videos. Thank you. While 10,000 isn't enough to receive an official reward from YouTube, it is still a milestone that should be celebrated. Because of this, I decided to make my own plastic YouTube play button. I began by making a 3D model of the YouTube play button in CAD software. The play button is made out of two pieces, a top plate and a bottom plate. Once I was happy with the overall look of each piece, I saved each plate as an STL or stereolithography file which breaks the model into triangular meshes. I then imported each STL file into slicing software which generated G-code to enable my 3D printer to fabricate both plates layer by layer and transferred the resulting instructions to my 3D printer using an SD card. While the print process was relatively quick, with each piece printing in about 3 hours, their large size resulted in some slight curling around the edges of each plate. This was primarily due to the fact that my printer does not have a heated bed, which caused layers close to the build plate to cool down and contract as higher layers were extruded. While I hope to add a heated bed to my printer in the near future to enable larger, flatter prints, a way to reduce curling on this printer would have been to lower the infill percentage of the print, as this would reduce the internal stresses on lower layers as the print cools. Once the two plates were finished printing, I applied super glue to both pieces and pressed them together. I then sandwiched the assembly between a tabletop and a book to remove some of the curling and straighten out the play button. While the glue dried, I opened up Inkscape, a free vector editing program on my computer. Here, I replicated the graphics and text found on the official YouTube creator rewards. Once I was happy with the look of the graphic, I mirrored everything horizontally and saved it as a PNG file. I next loaded a sheet of white vinyl into my craft cutter and cut out the design. A craft cutter is essentially a small CNC machine which cuts out a design by moving a small knife around the perimeter of each element of the graphic. Once everything finished cutting, I unloaded the vinyl and peeled off or weeded the excess material from the backing sheet using a pair of tweezers. During this step, I made sure to work slowly and carefully in order to avoid accidentally removing some of the smaller letters. The letters will be removed from the backing using transfer tape. After cutting a piece that matched the cutout of the letters, I peeled off the transfer tape's protective sheet, flattened it against the back of the vinyl, and squeezed out any excess air bubbles with my fingers. The play button and text are housed in a black 8x10 inch shadow box that I picked up from a local craft store. I first opened the back of the shadow box and removed all of the components from the frame. I then used the paper insert that came with the frame as a template, tracing out its shape onto a black piece of construction paper. After this, I cut along the traced outline using an X-Acto knife and a ruler. I next glued the construction paper to the shadow box's backboard. While the glue on the paper dried, I peeled the vinyl sheets backing off the letters, working slowly to make sure that the letters transferred cleanly to the transfer tape. Using the grid on my cutting mat, I then aligned the text to the bottom of the glass, making sure that everything was centered and straight, and slowly pulled off the transfer tape. The play button was attached to the backboard using foam tape. I applied two strips to the back of the play button, and then stuck it to the middle of the construction paper. The final step was to reassemble everything. At this point, I had my own unofficial YouTube plastic play button to celebrate Super Make Something's 10,000 subscriber milestone. Overall, this project is pretty simple, but it's a fun way to celebrate Super Make Something surpassing 10,000 subscribers. In case you want to print your own plastic play button to celebrate your own YouTube milestone, a link to the STL files for this project can be found in the video description below. Again, a sincere thank you for watching and liking my videos, and for subscribing to my channel. With your help, I'm confident that Super Make Something will qualify for an official YouTube reward sometime in the near future. In the meantime, thanks again for watching, now go Super Make Something! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. To keep up with my latest projects, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out more episodes by clicking on the video to the right. Connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and be sure to visit supermakesomething.com to download files for this and other projects. See you next time! Now go Super Make Something!